Brian has a full-time job, but he wants a new career. So he's gone back to college. He's on his way to check the result of his accounting final. He needs a good grade to apply for a master's program in hospital administration. Sadly, Brian's dog died last week, so he was distracted from his studies. To make things worse, his girlfriend texted this morning saying she wants to date other people. And his mother just called to remind Brian about taking her for cancer treatment next week. So Brian's got a lot on his mind, and he's feeling stressed. Trying to clear his thoughts, he sits down to smoke one more cigarette. But then Brian's heart starts to race. His forehead and palms become clammy and cold. He's suddenly nauseated. His fingers start to tingle, and he struggles for each breath. There's a growing, extreme tightness in his chest. Brian tries to stand up, but he feels like he's going to pass out. He clenches his chest and falls back down to the bench. One of Brian's classmates notices and asks if he's okay, but Brian doesn't answer. His classmate shouts for help when she sees Brian struggling, and she quickly decides to call 911 on her cell phone. Two emergency medical technicians arrive shortly after and begin first responder intervention. One EMT gathers details from Brian's classmate. The second speaks to Brian, trying to comfort him while taking vital signs and attaching leads to record Brian's EKG. Noting Brian's rapid, shallow breathing, the EMT places an oxygen mask over his nose and mouth to ensure a good flow of oxygen to the lungs. Within minutes of their arrival, the EMTs have treated Brian and loaded him into the ambulance. Brian arrives at the hospital at 1.15 p.m. An emergency room registered nurse takes his vital signs and places oxygen tubes into his nostrils. The nurse also clips a pulse oximeter to Brian's finger and inserts an intravenous or IV line into Brian's arm. The admitting clerk attempts to obtain information from Brian while a technician hooks up the EKG leads attached earlier by the EMT. A second RN gathers Brian's sample information. You should remember from Arturo's visit to the emergency room that sample stands for signs or symptoms reported by the patient, allergies, medications, past medical history, last oral intake, and events leading up to this medical episode. At 1.20 p.m., the EKG is recorded and a printout is placed in Brian's chart. We're using a lot of acronyms, huh? Are you taking notes so you can remember what they all mean? The emergency room physician enters and asks Brian if he knows where he is. Brian nods his head, yes. The physician reviews Brian's chart, along with the notes taken by the EMTs and ERRN. The physician also checks Brian's EKG recording and the EKG monitor, performs a physical exam, and orders blood tests. The person who will draw blood for the tests is called a phlebotomist. He arrives 25 minutes later at 1.45, obtains blood samples from Brian, and brings the samples to the laboratory for processing. There, a clinical lab technician will run the tests ordered by the physician. Back in the emergency room, the ER RN checks Brian's vital signs once more, just after the blood is drawn. Here's what she recorded at 1.45. Take note. I'll give you a minute to finish writing before we move to Angela's case. 